So I'm Anna, I'm a principal software engineer at Mintel for the past uh, seven and a half years. So we at Mintel went through uh, content, uh, digital content transformation this past eight years. So what will I talk about in this session? The context, how do we start? The path we, te we took, a small demo, and how did that help us with the COVID-19 pandemic and the status we are in now and next steps. So, we, who are we? So experts in what consumers say and why. So Mintel knows the consumer. Uh, we help our clients with all our data to understand what consumers and markets want and where they're headed to. Uh, we use a mixture of data, insights, experts in the field, <coughs> sorry, and we have a collective expertise on how to combine all these elements and provide insight to our clients. So we help our clients understand consumers and consumer needs uh, for our clients. So it was 2014. How was the state of our content management at Mintel? We had more than 10 independent legacy custom content management systems that were built over 20 years. So we had similar content in different places. Everything was separate. Uh, creating a report, you had to email back and forth all the relevant people. You need to know everyone that you had to involve. Uh, our shorter form content, so a lot of times would be published without any QA, uh, finding the right version of anything on anything old was nearly impossible. So a plan was made. So one CMS to rule them all. So we wanted to control the creation, management and publishing of all of Mintel content in one place. That would allow us to shorten the speed to market, the publishing cycles, make everything more consistent. Um, everything that Mintel does would look the same and teams would be, um, it would be easier for teams to work together and reuse content between subscriptions, between clients. So that was our proposal. So how did we uh, went there? We started with our longer form content reports. So those are big studies um, that are backed by detailed consumer data, uh, market data. It's, um, it takes about <coughs> three to four months beginning to end to do one of these reports. So there are many teams involved, many documents that need to be shared between teams. There are strict process rules. There is strict permissions on some stages because it involves consumer data. So we started with that one since it was a textbook example of what a platform like Alfresco can do. Workflows, content management, permissions, versioning. So just to give you an idea, this is what you, we need to write a report. So it's quite a big task, 17 different workflows, over 150 user tasks, all that, the decision points. It's, it's quite a, a journey to write one report. So how did we do it? Based on previous experiences, we realized that we had to have a really strong requirement gathering phase. So we really needed to understand how our teams worked, um, how everyone did it. In a global company, every region have their little processes. So we had to really understand how people worked, what did they need to do their job, and how could we consolidate them so that everyone would use the same process all around the world, no matter where they were, what team they were in. After we did that, the implementing. So <coughs> we start to build the workflows, 
streamlined all the processes, make everyone around the globe use the same, um, the same process, the same workflows. We tested it with our focus group and implemented some tools to make better use of all the data that we now had on the same place that helped managers understand the, the points of the problem points, the, pro the points where things were getting uh, delayed so that m made managers have a better understanding of what they needed to change, what they needed to do to improve our process. So we used Alfresco, uh, content, um, Alfresco content, system, uh, content, uh, content management. Um, we built on top of Alfresco Share. We used their embedded workflow engine. So it was all very standard Alfresco build on top of it. So, to give you an idea, so this is what our managers can see. So, for each report, they can have an overview of the, where the report is in time, what was done, what needs to be done, who did what when. So, in just a glance, they can see exactly where all the research for one specific report is and what was done, who's taking time to do what. So everyone can go and just check where it is. To make it easier for managers to manage the workload, uh, we extended the tasks dashlet from Alfresco. So this tells everyone exactly what they have to do at that moment. Managers have access to everyone's tasks. They can see who in their team has what assigned to them across all the system, not just a specific report. And if someone is out sick or on leave, they can just go and reassign it to someone else. So under the hood, we have a lot of uh, folders and um, documents. So each report has a significant amount of research behind it, and everything is now in the same place so that everyone can go and check what the research that was done, if they're doing something similar, that they can go and just look at it <coughs> and see what, some, what other analysts are doing. So that saves time. They don't need to know the people and call them or send them an email. They can just go into the system, check the similar reports, and just see what has been done. So, we finished our reports, our long form uh, content, and that was a big success. And so we decided in early 2016 uh, to tackle our short form content. So we went with a web first content creation, creation strategy. <laughs> we wanted to, analysts to be able to write their content as it would appear to clients but still take advantage of all the functionalities that we had built for reports and that Alfresco provides, like versioning, workflows, permissions, um, all that. So we built Mintel Editor, a library for Alfresco Share that allows HTML editing with all this, that, those capabilities. So this is a short timeline, what we did. So we started it out and we replaced the legacy content management system in 2016. That was our pilot. Um, so in 2017, we rolled it out, got rid of two other legacy systems. 2018, another two. Um, and we redid the library a bit so that we could just do deploy new products through configuration instead of code. In 2019, we started the pilot to actually bring our longer form reports into this format. Um, in 2020, we launched new products, completely new products, through this. Um, 2021, we finished consolidating everything. And this year, we are working towards migrating the last two remaining legacy systems so that we can shut all those legacy systems down. 
So, how we did it? So, we needed areas to organize our content. So, uh, we now have content hubs, which takes advantage of Alfresco's site structure. Um, and there are areas where the same type of content can be written. So, that is all configurable, where to publish, user roles, who writes what, who manages. So, everything is configurable, every user when they start, they have all the list of their content hubs in their home page, and, and they can just go into the, what they have, the, what they need to do. And so it, this allows us to um, create, deliver new streams of content with almost no engineering input. It's all through configuration. We then create one of these areas, configure all the roles, the subscriptions, and we just roll it out. So inside one of these, you can see that users can see everything that was written on that specific uh, product. So they will have the <coughs> sorry, they will have the list of everything that was written, the stage it's in, the user that has that piece at that time what it's been working on. So everything is in one place. You can just check out what's been done. And you also have the ability to link content together. So being a global company with global clients, for example, in this case, translations. So we write the original in English, and it's, in this case, it's translated to uh, Mandarin, right? <coughs> so that our Chinese clients can see the, the Mandarin version instead of the English one, making it more <coughs> relevant for them. Um, and so in the main content page, this is how you edit. You have all your data, but the blocks, you can see previous versions, the content, the path that it went through, uh, and uh, the text. So just to show you a little bit. So this is what a user sees when they log in. You have all the tasks where you can claim or reassign. And then you have all your, you can filter through product, through you to group. You can filter to only your tasks or the department tasks. You can see what's been there for a long time. And you have your content areas. So you just go into one and you have all the pieces for that one uh, and yeah, there you have um, it says the translation so you can jump into everything that it's connected to that specific piece you can jump on it you can see it in this case it's a published piece you can change it you can jump to <coughs> to blocks and you can see all the previous versions of that piece. So you can open it and you can see exactly who changed what. You, you have all the, the previous versions there. So to, when you want to, uh, as you can see there, there's the, the translation and the original piece that we were just in. So back in the main page, you can create a new piece, uh, just a very simple way. You have to choose who's going to review uh, the language. And then you can start from a template so that, uh, that is set for the type and product. And you start with the template exactly. You claim it, and you can start writing uh, the piece, changing the text. <coughs> um, as you can see, you have track changes for QCing that will uh, work as normal track changes, I guess. You just have, you have to enable it, and this makes it easier to QC pieces. Um, you have all the information uh, about who changed it and, and why. So, um, you have, 
yeah, you can have also all the track changes on the side um, if you like and accept, reject and go to next. Um, so, okay, sorry. You save it and then you can preview it as in our client's website. So exactly how our clients will see it. So you make all the changes and then you see exactly how it will appear on the client's website. <coughs> so just uh, you have all the blocks that you can use. They are pre-templated and you just drag and drop the ones you want uh, and then you can uh, do any changes. You have image blocks. You can do charting directly. So have that functionality. We integrate with Mintel's charting library so that all the charts in all Mintel product look the same. You can add images. <coughs> and yeah, and then you have like the table of contents, all the versions. Yeah, and that's about it. So we've done all this, and then two years ago, COVID nineteen pandemic hit. So where did we find ourselves in? So all of a sudden, everyone had to work fully remote from home. Um, there was new challenges that never um, presented in the office, like poor internet connections, childcare, school, you know, I have to manage all the, the kids' school work while still working a full-time job. So Mintel was very accommodating and allow employees to figure out what times it worked best for them to work, but that means that the time that people were logged in at <coughs> together got shorter and shorter because people were not only time zones, but then now also have to put what times people were better to, was better for people to work. So how our, our CMS, our content management system enabled a smooth response. So because of the system, we had all the content and all the research in one place. So anyone, every, anyone can, could just go and look at it. So <coughs> and they also know exactly the stage of the work. They know what they had to do and when, uh, how likely it is that something would come to them the next day, how likely it was that it'd been a couple of days since they had to see certain things. So this means that the, it was easy to collaborate, even asynchronously, and still deliver content in time and to the same level of quality that our clients are used to. So their, the teams had the, the freedom to schedule their, their work as better suited their individual needs, while Mintel kept producing quality content and research. The, the performance and resilience of the system uh, also helped since peop even people with poor internet connections could still work and um, get access to everything. But it was not only business as usual. There was also opportunities to be taken here. So the pandemic brought so much disruption and uncertainty that there was an increase in more market research, um, <coughs> And many of our clients ask us for bespoke research, or they wanted to know exactly how certain markets were performing in a weekly or fortnightly way. Um, so we had to track the general global market and in specific regions, current co consumer sentiment. Because our system was so flexible, we could just <coughs> easily create new areas and let our analysts and research teams to just start putting together new content uh, Im almost immediately and deliver it to our clients very fast uh, <coughs> in a matter of hours they can start they could start writing and doing their research so this means that our clients had 
all this crucial information in a very timely manner. Uh, we were also able to provide COVID content in multiple languages, which was uh, <coughs> sorry, making it um, more accessible to our clients to track all the, the market and in their specific regions. And it made our translation team much, uh, much, much easier job for our translation team since they know exactly where everything is and what needed to be translated. So what's our current status? So we have 750 active users that use the system for their daily work. Uh, we now only have two legacy content management systems in live production. So we're about 80% uh, through our transformation. And we are planning to get those two legacy systems offline this year. So we did some integrations. So obviously the Mintel client website every published directly to it. So every time something finishes the process is immediately available for all our clients. We connect to integrate with the, our custom data platforms. So this allows us to automatically transform data into charts from all the data we have available. Uh, Analysts can also tap into our global product, new product database and pull in information about new products directly into a content block so they don't have to go and search for it. We integrate with SDL's translation management system. It's a cloud translation system. So when our content needs to be translated, we automatically send them the, all the files. They translate it, they send it back and it's automatically transformed into a ready-to-publish piece. We use the Detect Language API to just double-check that the language it matches the content and then other various smaller Mintel custom systems. So <coughs> these are the benefits that we already see. Um, obviously, one big thing is write con for the web first before analysts would just write in a Word document, send it to our production team, and they would have to copy and paste into the website the content. Now, they, sometimes it would not be the best format because it's very different to write in a Word document or for a website. Right now, our analysts know exactly how it would look like, so they um, cater their content to the format. Um, the content looks good in any device. Uh, everything is consistent, so if you see uh, a piece from Mintel, it will always look more or less the same. We deliver new products very easily. We have usage metrics. Um, everyone uses the same process. There's quality built in. Uh, all the content is in the same place. You can reuse it because everything is in the same system and we have one content management system to maintain instead of more than 10. All this was done by a not that big team. So me, a test engineer, and Peter, Ashley, and Tudor, software engineers, and Louis Skinner is our senior product manager. So thank you. Thank you.